So guys, on this episode, we're headed out to Longview, Texas to pick up a forgotten 1960 Mercedes-Benz. Now we bought this car on an online auction for only 1,650 bucks. We purchased the little Mercedes. Uh-huh. We're just here to pick it up. Bill, we need the keys to the Mercedes. Now we had really no idea of what we were getting into when we picked this car up, other than the fact that it had been sitting in a garage for over 50 years. They drove it in here in 1972 and parked it in that garage. Yeah and we drug it out. Yeah. First time it's been out of that garage since 72. <laughs> The timing chain broke on it. They lived four or five blocks across here. 1972, they drug it and put it right in that garage right there is all that's wrong with this car. Okay. That yeah. was in 1972. Right, right. right. But that was, that was their fan. He bought it in the Germany. Army. He bought it in Germany, brought it back over with him in 1960. And all I ever saw of this car, when that garage door was open, you couldn't see none of the rest of it because crap stacked right. on top of it. Yeah. And all you could see was the emblem on the back. Yeah. <laughs> until he died, until we started cleaning it out. That's right. all I'd ever seen of this car. Yeah. You know. You know I studied on it, studied on it. I'm not a car guy. Uh -huh. That's too much work for me to even try to start. <laughs> yes, sir. And then yeah. you're gonna pay a fortune to somebody else doing it if right. you don't do mm -hmm. you know, part of it yourself. Yep. But I wish it had brought a little more money than it did, but we're glad it didn't. <laughs> well, I understand. <laughs> So follow along as we take this dirty and neglected garage find and transform it from this to this. So now that we've got this old Mercedes back into the shop, uh, me and dad are just gonna dive in a little bit deeper to see what it's gonna take to get this car alive and up on the road again. Guess we'll see if we can't figure out how to get this hood open. There's a latch. Uh, a little gas engine. Yeah. I wasn't for sure some of these things were diesel. I'm gonna take that off. It? Well, that's a weird looking. Is that the brake set up there? Uh, it looks like it is. The master cylinder, I guess? Yeah. That's weird. Yep. Yeah. It looks like everything is complete, though, from as far as I can tell. Looks like everything's over here. I don't know. If that, no. Something moved in Something it. moved. Yep. Really need to get the hood off so we can actually yeah. check on it now, but we got a, looks like we're gonna have an issue here. It's kind of bowed, kind of been dented out, so I don't know. Oh gosh. Ooh, that is extremely weak, ain't it? Yeah, it may be split right there even. Maybe That's just, just paint. paint. Somebody's closed that down. But them hinges don't work very good. Right. They tried closing it down and messed that Bennett, thing yep. up. Maybe we can straighten it up and keep it somewhat I have to reinforce shape. it somehow. Let's get this hood off where we can see everything a little bit better. It's hard to work with <laughs> yeah. two foot of space sticking your head up underneath That's right. it. Yep. A 
dry matter. Yeah, humping everything up. Hell, oh, the valve cover. That's what those bolts yeah. are, ain't they? I bet it is, yep. Well, oh, that's great. I mean, somebody's already been in here. Right. Super grimy in there, is it? Nice. No. Yeah. Time of chain <laughs> is broke, huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure enough. Well, that would have been nice to have known while we were bidding on it, but right. I think we probably still would have tried to buy it, but. Yep, well, there's actually a little link of some sort. I don't know that that would have went to that, though. Maybe. Well, this ain't going to be one that's going to run easy, is it? No. But we'll do a, a good hard one anyways. Yeah. I've never done a timing chain on something like this. I guess first things first is to even find the See if we can find the parts, find you know? Find the parts, yeah. And I'm not sure if that thing was turning over. Yeah, it's turning over. But that chain's just, just gonna yeah. be hanging loose down there off the, mm -hmm. that crank uh, gear, I guess. I wonder if we'd probably wanna find, if we can find a new cam gear and gears and chain and all that, huh? I bet, yeah, I didn't even look at the mileage on it or anything. Uh, I don't remember what it said. So, might as well just replace all that while we're there. Yeah. Well, let's get to Googling and see what we can find on it, I guess. So, now that we know for sure that we indeed are going to need a timing chain on this engine, uh, we're just going to have to try to see if we can find the parts. But for right now, we're just going to kind of do a little once around. We haven't really got to check this car out a whole lot, uh, other than just now popping in the hood and pulling the valve cover off of it. Uh, now, me and Dad haven't really messed a whole lot with uh, dealing with replacing timing chains on like an overhead cam setup like right this is. I'm hoping that it, it's not an interference motor, so when that timing chain broke, uh, an interference engine would have allowed the valves to get messed up where the pistons would have hit, you know, the valves as the valves were open there. So we're hoping that we have no kind of head damage and we're just going to be able to replace this chain, the cam gears, the, you know, the crank gear on the timing chain and get all that put back into place in time. Uh, get this thing turning over and just see if it's going to run. Uh, but it's a pretty stinking straight old car. The hood did have a little bit of damage uh, just over here. We're going to have to figure out what we want to do on it. Uh, you can tell that the, the springs on it had just got super rusty and someone probably tries to close it down without being too careful and it buckled right here. Pretty common problem on old cars if you're not careful and you're shutting them down. Uh, if these hoods have any kind of weak spot in them, they'll definitely do that. So we might be able to reinforce it back in here with some kind of a brace just to save the hood because I can only imagine finding parts for these cars is probably almost impossible. Uh, but back to the body of the car, as I said, other than that hood, man, this thing ended up being a lot better shape than, than what I thought it was going to be in. Super straight. I was looking at it when we were loading it on the trailer. Right across here, man, we've probably got five or six little, little dings just kind of about two or three inches apart from each other. Not really sure what would have caused that, but I do know that that's gonna be an issue when we get to cleaning this car up. Those are gonna show up. But other than that, I really do think with just a little bit of time, a little bit of elbow grease, this old paint, will get it washed up, we will get it buffed out. I really think you're gonna be shocked at how well this car is gonna clean up. Uh, we have all of our original hubcaps still. This one's in pretty good shape. Some of them, the paint's coming off just a little bit. Little bitty old 13 inch wheels and tires, so these are extremely dry rotted. I believe I saw them one where it was a Sears tire, so that only tells you how old these tires are, which the car was parked back in the 70s, so everything on this car is going to be dated around the 70s. Inside the car, now it isn't terrible. 
uh, I've seen better, but I've definitely seen a lot worse. Uh, dash is really primitive here, just got a little simple gauges. We were curious on the mileage, and it looks like it's about, well, it's showing 15,000 miles, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that's 115,000 miles since we're already having issues with the timing chain being broke. It's got a really cool little old radio in this thing. Very simple, but very sharp for, for what it is. Uh, box of parts right here. Not exactly what we've got. I see some spark plugs right on top. That looks like an old heater core there. Uh, I don't know. We'll just have to go through all this stuff and see what we got. Some radiator caps. I'm, be I'm willing to bet some of this stuff goes to this car, but I bet some of it's just some random parts that got placed in a box that goes to who knows what. The seat is pretty comfortable though. Uh, back here in the back, I believe the rear seat is in a lot better shape than the front seat. Definitely be able to clean this up. Can't really tell. Oh, there's probably our old headliner. Yeah. There's what's left of the old headliner, which is not going to ever go back in place. But man, the sheet metal on this car is just such good shape. Door panels aren't terrible. Look at the door jams. Just clean as can be. Even up here, there's no rust through on any of this stuff. Uh, what do we got here? So, some service oil changes. That's cool, back in 65, uh, we had the oil changed. I'm trying to see, okay, the mileage was 86,705. So that was back in 65. So from 65 to 70, you know, five years, they put on another, you know, 20, 20 something thousand miles on this car uh, when I guess the, the timing chain broke. We've got oil changes back all the way to 30,000 miles on here. So that's pretty cool seeing those on there. Let's go into the trunk, see what we got going on back here. Once again, man, this car is just such good shape. In comparison to what we're normally finding around the shop, uh, it is a 190, uh, so it's a Mercedes 190. It's gonna be a 190B, uh, being that it's a gasoline engine. I believe they made a 190BD uh, or maybe 190D that would have been the diesel engine, which a diesel would have been cool, but I would have been even less knowledgeable on working on that thing. So uh, I don't know if this is, how this is actually unlocked. Oh man. <laughs> So you never really know what you're gonna find in these old cars when you buy them. And on this one, we've got a very old and primitive Canon computer. If you kids even know what that is. Our computers nowadays fit in our pocket and they go around with us everywhere we go. This is a, I'm wondering if it has the tower, if it's all built in or if that's just a monitor. Not really sure what this piece goes to. I'm assuming it goes to the car. Gosh, this trunk is so clean. Still has the old mat in there. Still has the old spare tire, the original jack. Little number puncher here. Stereo. Some brake pads. Phone cables. Man, a little bit of this and that. Yeah, so that appears that's just the old monitor, so there's no tower to it. Oh, gosh. Oh, and here's the tower. So yeah, we've got the old computer tower there. That's been gutted of all the drives, which probably had like that five and a half inch floppy or something at the time and the three and a half inch floppy. I don't even know if there's a motherboard still in it. But very, very impressed with the inside of this trunk. You never see them this clean. Once we get all this mess out of the way, we'll be able to get some more shots of what that looks like. But this is probably one of the cleanest trunk areas and huge for the small of the car it is. It's a very big trunk in it. Um, Glad we got our emblem on the back of the car. We are missing it on the front of the car. 
Apparently we had some, uh, some Texas fans on this car for sure. Now they told us that the gentleman that owned this car bought it brand new, had it uh, imported into the United States, I don't remember what year that was, and then drove it up until the time and chain broke and then they parked it in that garage ever since. Kind of a quick little overview of this side. Cool little blinkers mounted there on the fenders. Uh, well, yeah, pretty excited to have this car and hoping that we're able to get this thing up and running. Uh, we'll try our best to see if we can find parts for this. I know being the age that it is, being a Mercedes, it might be a little bit more difficult than just going and grabbing, you know, uh, some spark plug wires for your 350 and uh, putting them on there. So we'll do what we can to find the parts we need, dig into this engine a little bit better, and hopefully by the end of the video, we're here up and running, cleaned up, and driving down the road under our own power. So after doing a ton of searching on the internet, uh, finally come up with some parts that I think are gonna be what we need on this car. Uh, we've got our timing chain here. I've got a couple gears on our, uh, on our upper cam gear because I wasn't exactly sure on what part number we needed on that. So just went ahead and ordered them both. Uh, we can always send one back. Got our chain guide there we'll need. And also got our gear that's gonna go down on our crankshaft as well. New oil filter, uh, new uh, valve cover gasket. And we did find this book inside the car. Now, it was hard enough finding the parts for this engine, but there's really just not a lot of information at all on working on these cars. So basically diving into changing this timing chain is gonna be just kind of a trial and error. This book does have some information on the basic tune-up stuff. A lot of stuff that could be helpful, but not exactly everything we need to know. So at this point, we're just gonna start tearing this car apart, get the radiator off where we can get to the front of the engine to see exactly how this timing chain ran to get it pulled off and get the new one on there. It doesn't look like the radiator should be too bad getting off. Maybe more so getting that lower that hose lower, loose, yeah. though. I wonder if it's got any cooling in it. Golly. Yeah, bone dry. Right. I did even check the oil, make sure it ain't got any water or anything in it. No, more sure it's thick. Good grief. I'm a light gear oil. <laughs> Look at that dipstick. I yeah, what the purpose what the, of that yeah. is. So you don't lose it? I guess so. I don't think there's no need to try to drain the radiator. Maybe they did that before they parked it or something. Could have, yeah. I really hope that, you know, on this head, it's not an interference engine and them valves are okay. Right, yeah. Cause it... But I don't know, you know, when we go to putting this chain back on, we could pull them plugs out and take our little camera scope in there and kind of look to see if the valves look okay. Right. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty tough. easier to see some, huh? Yeah. A lot easier. Yeah. Actually see down through here now. <laughs> Still can't tell much though. I guess we'll get this fan and stuff off. This plate right here. Somebody's had that off too, ain't they? Yeah, I think the screws are on top of the, the carburetor. Oh, no, the mother too? Yeah. Yeah, I see the little timing mark here off the block. So I have to find the marks on this crank pulley. But there's gotta be some way you get down in there to get that timing gear that goes on the crank replaced. 
Right. Let's get this fan off where we can take that and kind of see it a little better. Guess we might have to get the belt off there first. There were some belts inside the car we can check to see because this one look here it's got a oh, bad uh, spot yeah. maybe they'll have one inside there hey, that impact or... i'm glad it had this open spot here yeah we weren't having Water pump ain't froze up, so yeah. feels pretty good. There we go. Make a headway. <laughs> What's behind the plate? Yeah. I'm thinking that's about where the chain's broke. Right at that. Oh, doesn't give you much. That's a pretty big gear there. I don't guess I realized it had another gear right there. And how in the world do you replace it or? Yeah. Yeah, they don't give you much of anything, does it? Uh-uh. There's barely enough room to get your ratchet, I mean, your ratchet in there. I mean, you can't see anything about it. You just know that it's a gear. So the chain, all right. So yeah, it comes it off there. this tensioner that's right here. And then I guess it runs on this side of the, the yeah, that goes on that side of that gear. But there's no, uh, you know, if this would come off, like the front yeah, yeah. part of the block, but I don't see any separation points of where it gives any kind of evidence that you can take the front of the, the block off there, like a timing cover. Right. Yeah, I didn't get that gear. Well, unless maybe that was the different part number. Maybe, you know, Could've one been. of them was for the cam gear, because that does look, that one's smaller, smaller though, Yeah, that's what they're filling. I think both those others are pretty close to the same size. Yeah, I don't see anywhere where, I mean, that's just all one piece. That may have been the reason why they stopped where <laughs> Stop. they stopped. Um... I guess you want to pull that crank pulley off down there to see if you can see that the gear that's down there. Uh, yeah, I guess Also, that's... I need to figure out the timing marks. Let me get a socket on that where I can turn this over. Okay. And uh, see if we can't figure out something to line up with the timing mark there. All right, so I mean, it definitely is turning over really easy. That chain's broke, you know, somewhere, somewhere down, down in there. here. It's not even kind of clanking like it's rolling against that sprocket. And there's the timing marks. According to that, that should be top dead center. Now there should be some kind of marks on this cam up here on getting it in time as well. Wonder if that's it right here. Oh, I bet it is. Yep. Is that a mark there? 
tell if that's a little mark on the gear there or not. It's something. Looks like it, don't it? Yep. So I may have that one where it would have been where it needs to be, but like I said, we'll figure that right. out later. We just need to get to where we can get this old chain off and make sure them valves are in good shape. Let's take this off, I guess. I mean, I, <laughs> I kind of want to lay eyes on that gear that's on the crank. that piece off. Said we may have to have a puller on that one because it's got those little pins. They're not, they're, uh, they're round though. It's weird. Rather than, you know, like a square yeah. pin, they're actually round. But it, it's going to have to be a puller that has an arm that's skinny enough to not mess up those threads, you know, to get to that base back in there. Let's see what we got. Still can't get at it. Yeah, that's. I don't know how you're supposed to get at any of those gears. Unless that piece comes off. Let me grab that gear and kind of you know, see what it looks like size-wise. Okay. I don't even see the square pin, though, you know? See? Right. It's, it's got another style pin that I can't see on that gear behind it. But it could where that comes off here, you know, and then that slides in. Right. But if not, then I don't know how you get get to that point. Looks like it's another piece. It looks like it is. Yeah, that looks. Is it rubber or is it steel? It's like it's. I don't know if it's plastic or rubber. Or They just break off. Just that little edge, yeah. Just. Yeah, you may not want to be careful then. And it may be where we uh, replace the chain. I mean, I hate to, you know, because them gears are probably worn down some. You always want to kind of match your chain with the new right, gears, yeah. but. But I don't know about finding this seal, which if we got to, we got to. Let me get a wire brush just to kind of see what exactly it looks like there a little better. You get something before you get all that gummed up on there. I get that top layer of yuck. Yeah, that's going to be some kind of a... Some kind of a seal. Yeah, front seal, I guess. But I guarantee you, if we try to get that out, we're going to have to replace it. Yep. And the thing that bothers me is if we fight to get it out, and it, you know what I mean, you still can't get to it. Right. It does us no good. We just kind of added another... another mm -hmm. step that... I guess this gear here would run, uh, maybe it runs this fuel pump and the distributor, turn, you know, turns that stuff. Yeah. But once again, I don't know, the only way I see of, of getting it out, if you needed to replace it, would be to pull that, that bolt out and, and fish it through fish the it. top. Yeah. Which if the head was off of it, it you know. Yeah, yeah, it would be just right there. But yeah, trying to figure out how that chain's going to fish. We've got to fish it from up here. 
which on that tensioner, you see it's right here. Right. You know what? It looks like this big old nut right here yeah. and bolt. I think that runs to this tensioner and you kind of, as you, you know, adjust that bolt in and out, it moves that tensioner. Let's see if we can't, let's see if that is how that works. Cause we'll at least relieve the tensioner on it, you know. Ready? Yeah. Whole thing's turning, so it's. It is. Ain't nothing moving in here, though. That's weird. Maybe it. Well. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's. Maybe it comes off, and there's a thing inside. Like see right Allen there? Thing. Yeah. See, you can see the threads there aren't turning. So. Yeah. Yeah. It might take it off. Spring loaded, huh? Spring loaded. Good grief. It's got a metal piece in it, I guess it. What's it look like up in that hole? I can't see nothing. That's what it does. I mean, it got, but I can't tell, I can't see up in there, you know. I think probably what it needs is just to be kind of bumped. Bumped, tapped. Yeah. Yep, let's go ahead. I can't really see. Okay. I think that's all the way yeah. off. See it push this little pan out. That, that, that oh, okay. sleeve kind of came out, so. Huh. Yeah, so. There's Might have to spray that there. up, you know, so it'll work. Let yep. me hit it with some stuff. We Might even try to do that real quick, just see if we can get it working in and out. Yeah. yeah that's working that in there, so yeah. Got the tension off of it, but yeah. I don't want to pull the chain out too soon if we find out we kind of needed it to help fish the other right. one through, you know. Yep. There's another big bolt right here that I'm wondering if it don't do something to adjust something else, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, with not having any any information. Well, and just not being able to see. Like, I just don't know how we're going to get the chain from, you know, dropping it loose. Obviously, it'll be easy dropping it down through there, but how are we going to get it to come back? up around you know right so what we're trying to figure out now is basically how we're going to get our new parts on this engine uh, here's our our camshaft gear that's basically going to go on there and replace this timing gear this is our crankshaft gear that goes back in there and we're not sure if that little this seal has to come off to replace that there's another gear right here that runs off this chain. And then our tensioner's right here. We figured out how to adjust that. So we're just trying to decide before we pull this old chain out, if we somehow need to link onto it when we're fishing our new chain through, uh, maybe we might need to pull the oil pan off where we can get to that lower gear that way and try to fish that chain back up through there as well. But kind of needing to decide if we're wanting to just go ahead and 
put the new chain on it, leave the old gears since we can't really figure out how to get to that one, or if we're just gonna dive in a little bit deeper and try to find more parts for this car, get both gears on there, new chain, and do it the way we had originally planned to begin with. So do a little thinking, maybe try to do a little bit more digging and just make a decision and move on from there. So we went ahead and got the car up in the air so we could begin pulling the oil pan out from underneath it. Uh, drain the oil out of it. It doesn't really look terrible. You can tell that it's old, but definitely not any kind of pieces of metal or anything like that that we've seen come out of it. Uh, now that we've got the oil pan dropped loose here, you can actually see a little bit more. And here's our old timing chain that's just dangling loose down in there. Uh, now that the pan is, is moved from the block, our crankshaft seal will actually just pull right out. And I don't know how well you guys can tell, but up inside here is going to be our crankshaft uh, timing gear that we were needing to replace. And it's kind of hard to tell, but I can see that those teeth are wore down on it. So I'm glad we went ahead and took this step to get that gear replaced. So we're gonna go ahead and try to put that new gear on there. Then I think we've got a pretty good idea of how we're gonna work our new timing chain in place. We'll go ahead and get that in place, move on to our camshaft timing gear. Then we'll go ahead and uh, be getting real close to getting this thing set back in time. But first we wanna be sure we check our valves, make sure none of those are bent. That way, just in case, if we have to pull this head off, we can go ahead and do that before we spend a lot of time on trying to get this set in time and find out we've got bad bent valves. It definitely wasn't just gonna slide off, was no. it? No. Nope. Does it look like this other one? Yeah, they're they're similar but they're not identical. Do you know how I grabbed that from you just now? That's that that's went up where, against that went up in it, yeah. So this one's got a little bit deeper neck here than that one. Yeah. See? Well, it's also got... It's got like a spacer though, don't it? Huh? Yeah. Or a ring thing. That, that fit in there. Oh, so that would have made it very... I guess that's just what that does. This, this one eliminates that. Right. See how it's kind of beveled there? Mm -hmm. Should be the same then. I just don't think you would need this ring on this new one. So we'll try to get it up on there. Okay. Definitely tell these teeth look a lot better though, huh? Yeah, most definitely. So we went ahead and got our new crankshaft gear put in place. Uh, we just took a little bit of heat from a torch to allow that gear to expand and it went right on to that keyed shaft just perfectly the way we need it to. Now we want to go ahead and get our old timing chain pulled off of here. And originally we had thought about trying to hook onto the chain down low and then pull the as we pull our old chain out, it'll guide our new chain in. Uh, the only issue is on this side of the engine, we're already out of place with some of the guides there. So that would help us on this side, but this side we're just going to have to fish it down through there anyways. Uh, I believe at this point we're just going to take the gamble of just pulling it off, go ahead and replace our camshaft gear here as well. But we need to get these spark plugs pulled out, get our camera down in there, and just make sure that none of our valves were bent when this chain broke originally. I might have to turn this gear as we pull it out. Hmm really want to come. Hmm. Is it hanging? No. Oh, what it's hanging on. No. Yeah. She is. Now, I don't know if the link, if they had everything to it, was up on top there. Or right. Hopefully, there's no little pieces down in that pan. 
coming. That key stay in the... Yeah, as far as I can. Is it on the pulley or the shaft? No, it's on the shaft. I got it here. And grab that no pulley, or no gear. Start pulling those plugs out and I'll go grab that camera and see what it looks like down in there. Okay. We're trying to get these old spark plugs out of this engine so we can run our little camera scope down in there to look at the valves. But we notice they're kind of weird. So they've kind of got like a pink color to them. I'm not exactly sure if they've come that way or if they've overheated and turned that color. But right here is the first one that we tried to get and it just broke plumb off. So we're gonna have to take a little bit more care on trying to get these out. Maybe hit them with a little bit of heat and just baby them back and forth. Uh, that one we're gonna have to try to get out with an ease out hopefully. Really don't wanna have to pull this head off unless we just absolutely have to because if we pull the head off uh, and there's not any valve damage, then we're at putting a new head gasket on it. Uh, just a little bit more work, a little bit more time on finding parts and a little bit more money on that. So right now we're just gonna kind of spend a little bit of time on these spark plugs. Hopefully we can get them out, check inside the cylinders there to look at those valves and hopefully everything's okay. So we can go ahead and get our chain put in place here and everything back in time. So we were finally able to get all these spark plugs out. Uh, for the most part, we were able just to use a little bit of heat, but for the one that broke off, uh, we tried heat, we tried an ease out, and unfortunately just ended up having to drill it out and retap the threads there. Now that we've got our little camera, we can get down in there and look inside the cylinders. This is the one that we had to actually drill out, and it's, it's kind of rusty up there on the cylinder walls. You can see just a little bit of debris that we need to try to clean out a little bit better from uh, drilling that out. But I can't see anything on the top of this piston that looks like it's scarred up from the valves hitting it. Now I can't exactly get the camera to aim up at the top there to see the valves. But if they were to hit that piston, there would definitely be evidence of where those valves you know, crushed into the piston when the timing chain broke. Uh, back here, looks good. Just really dry. We're gonna wanna get some kind of lubrication put down in these cylinders and let it set for just a little bit. The very back cylinder here, ooh, that piston is up at the very top. And I do not see any evidence of any kind of scarring from the valves hitting, which is good, is what we, we didn't want to see any kind of bent valves. And man, that's the very front cylinder. And it is extremely rusty. Not sure why it would have got in such bad shape there. But I think we're good as far as knowing we don't have any kind of bent valves. Get some kind of lubrication setting down in these cylinders to kind of clean that rust up just a little bit. And we'll go ahead and start installing our, our timing chain and being sure that everything's in time. That way we can turn it over for the first time and hopefully hear this thing run again and after 50 years. I think I'm gonna try to see if I can work it through this side over here first. Maybe if we kind of just go together with it, it'll... Nope. Okay, there we go. Okay. 
Alright. Let's see it down here on the bottom. It looks off though, don't it, right there. It looks out of a line. Yeah. Sure does. Did I get that gear on there backwards? I bet I did. I, maybe, I yeah. bet I did, because I think the deep side went on the other. I think the, uh, the deep side went backwards. Okay. That would have been a bad mistake. Pull that off real quick. Out of that puller. No. better don't it? Lots better. Yep. Yep. I mean I was paying attention to that when I took it off but I just did it backwards. Now the fun part. And I don't know we may have to pull that cam off and like you know fish it on with the chain. I don't yeah. know. The tensioner won't even spin. The gear. There it is. I thought I seen it moving. It'll only go one way. It's bumping against the the bracket there. Wow. Well. <laughs> Easy enough that way, wasn't it? Yeah. Now to just get it on this side of the crank gear though. You know, I think there's a guide right here on this inside the block. Yeah. Right here that guides into that crank gear. So I think the only way we'll ever get it is the, the crank gear is actually gonna have to turn to let it fish to down fish through, through that guide. Oh, okay. So we'll need that bolt. extension or not or right. yeah the tedious part just getting that chain I don't even see it down here right now let me see if I can turn this backwards Something kind of locked up though. Yeah, it pulled it tight up here. So can you not move the uh, tensioner? Well, you're gonna have to pull it some slack. Need more? Um. Well, we've got to have. There's only gonna be so much, you know, that we can get to put the link back together with it's pretty close let me turn it got it tied up here yeah this is going to be hard because now we're like so far out of time from turning that everything yeah. we may have to take it off up here i think we're going to have to and move the rotate the gear to match back up after we get it you think I should try to get that master link in there? 
I think so, and that way it holds it together. Can we get the master link in there and then turn it over? Because I'm only going to really be able to get, you know, the one side of it. Yeah, the side with the little... I won't be able to get to the back side to put the little... If I don't lose the clip. To put the clips on it. Right. So let me just push this one part get through. Get it up here where we can work on it. Yeah. Because once we get a chain on it, we're going to have to take the chain loose somehow, you know, to uh, be sure we got it in time, because it's not in time right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can get this. Something where you're holding your breath and... You hold your mouth just right. Mm -hmm. Wiggle your nose and close your eyes. I think I got it. You go through all the way on both of them. Both pretty ends. sure, yeah. It's uh, it's loose though. The chain is pretty. Does have a lot of slack in it, but just doesn't seem it when you're trying to do that. Right. Let's see well, if we can get. Because you're right there on that gear. Turn over. Think it'd be better to get it to come up this way or go the other way. I'm thinking come up this way probably. Oh, let me let me see if I can get this tensioner so that it's. Let me try this other way. We got a working unit, anyways, huh? Is it on there yet, or? Not yet. I see it there. It's right here where my finger is. There you go. I think I'm gonna go a little bit further. Okay. I think top dead center is right in there, but I'm not sure. How far are these? Are our lines anywhere uh, close? No, I don't even no. see it. So let me pull this back off. So I'm going to go ahead and put our uh, crankshaft pulley back on the crankshaft down here. And we've got a little marker right here that's going to show us when we're in top dead center when that number one piston is at the very top. Uh, we're going to have to have that one in line, top dead center. And then there's a little mark right here on the back side of the camshaft that we're off by about, it looks like about an inch there. We're going to need to be sure those are in line on top dead center too. So. Figure out once we get the crankshaft in top dead center, then we'll figure out how if we're going to take this camshaft off or what we're going to do to get those timing marks in place. I'm going to try to get it from up here. Yeah, and try. Try to make sure I got them lined up. Be able to pull it in with that, huh? Should be able to. As long as they're lined up, it's a problem. I just have to pull it back off with the pulley again here in a minute. Yeah, I guess we don't want to get it on there too good, do we? But good enough with nowhere on. You got something you can stick in that cylinder as I turn this, and we'll see. Uh, still coming. Okay, stop there. Going no, down. Going down. It's uh, going back yeah. down, ain't it? Feels like that's right in the. It's and that's going down. Yep. Up. Yep, now down. It's going to be right in there. Mm -hmm. That should be top dead center. But we're off quite a bit there. Um, now I think we're going to have to take the, the link out here. And then turn the cam and put it back together. I think so, yep.
Will it come out or we get some paper towels so we don't Yeah, let's start setting it. Hold that, yeah. And then I'm just gonna be ready to turn that. Now, the only problem is I know we're on the mark there, but I'm afraid once our tensioner tightens, you may throw us it's off. It's going to change some stuff. Maybe not. Maybe not, huh? Yeah. I think that might be about right. You may want to put them paper towels back in there, though, because when you go to put that back on, you don't want the, yeah. <laughs> the littler piece to. Do we want to go with that though? Or? I think so. Okay, I'll go ahead and try to put those that link together. See, there's two of these. I don't know. Oh, one goes in the middle. Oh, sure enough. Hmm, that may be fun, huh? Mm-hmm. How in the world am I going to do that? Mm, I need that little pick. Feels like we're doing surgery, huh? <laughs> Hold that, that way I grab the mothers and it don't fall off. I got a grip on it. I'll leave an indention in my fingers by the time I hand it to you. Yeah, these little things, though. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> to breathe now, huh? You may put that little tensioner I thing think back I start on saving there. That, that should be our next step just to make sure that we're not. And this rod thing was like going inside the block that way, right? Correct. Yes, sir. It's a long spring. Uh, can you can you get that to lift any to help me on the spring? Cool. I don't know if oil pressure though helps to make that tensioner get tight or what it is, or if it's just that. I bet it's just that spring. It might be. Well, man, that thing's pretty tight on this side. Once it starts rotating, I bet it kind of want to get this pulley on here now though to be sure well because that seal goes on first though don't it yeah I wish I could check it to make sure that it did look like we were for sure at the right spot on the crank you know right in
Looks like we're pretty stinking close. And it might have been off just a, a hair. Does it look like if, let me turn this, is that dead on on the mark? Or is it off? No, just? It's, it's just bad. So if I turn it. If you turn that one clockwise, it'll give us a little bit more dead on. If I turn it clockwise, it will be? Yeah, just, just a hair of it. Okay, that's going to be right okay. then. Because that's what I'm trying to do. I think we're good then. Let's just do this and uh, let's put some oil in that squirt bottle and let's turn this a couple revolutions. Okay, I've already squirted some in there, so. No, on the chain. Oh, on the chain, okay. That'll help in them cylinders too. To kind of get them worked up and down some. Right. This is the first time it's all been moving in 50 years. Yeah. I'm gonna put this on top, what I think is top dead center. Well, I can't tell without that pulley, but I guess you can put that screwdriver down in there again. Okay. Uh, there it is. Couldn't see the handle sticking up at me. Okay. That was right there. it right there. We must be on the opposite side. On the side other of side, it. Yep. okay. Yep, we just went past I it. I miss it. Yep. Right there. Oop. We're up and down right in there. You just passed it. You have to go backwards just to, just a smidgen. Right there. Oop. Too far. <laughs> it's all right. Let me just get another round on it. Okay. Just a hair more according to the mark. Hair more? Like that, yep. I think we're pretty close. I don't know on that tensioner how it works, so I don't know what makes it, you know, get tighter. I mean, obviously putting that in right there does some but I don't know if it does all of it right it may, it may be pressurized you know once the oil pump gets some oil to it it pumps it up thought maybe I could you know work it back and forth but it doesn't right. seem like it I think we're gonna have to get that oil pan put back on it with some oil in it and get it turning over with the starter and just see check our compression and just see how everything looks and and then we'll actually have the pulley on there that has the timing marks to know for sure. Okay. I mean if I think it's right. Yeah. So from what we can tell and what we've read up on this car, you can't get the old oil pan off without actually removing the engine. So we got this oil pan cleaned up the best we can, reinstalled all the bolts on it, dumped some fresh oil in it, got us a new battery. Now for the first time, we're gonna see if this thing will turn over under its own power and check its compression. I don't hear much compression. I don't either. Ready? Yep. Good on that one? The second one, I'm not hardly getting any. Really? Yeah. Huh. 
It's getting better, but it's... Yeah, that's that one we ended up having to drill out. Mm -hmm. Hmm. The other three have a really good compression, but... See, I don't think there's any issues with the... with the valves on that one, and that piston was down anyway, so... Right. Huh. Now. You know what? It could have just been a valve that was kind of kind of stuck. Stuck, yeah. How's yeah. our chain feel? Not bad. See, I'm not. I still don't know how the tension works on that, and it could be just strictly all mechanical. You know, right. that just when you put that in, it has that little rod that pushes it out. But I was assuming that maybe it might be hydraulic and kind of pump up. You know. And we honestly haven't turned it over, and it may take it cranking, you right. know, to, to actually pump it up better. I think she'll run. Yeah. I'm going to bump it over, get this on top dead center, and see if our marks still look like they're lining We're almost up. Almost right on it right here. Yeah, we sure are. I'm just turning it over by hand. No. If you're almost on it and I'm almost on it, that's a good sign. Right there. Okay. That's it. Yep. Cool. How's our oil level look? I don't know if it filled up that new filter or not. That's just the weirdest dipstick. Yes. I guess that's on there just to keep it from coming back out like a weight. We're about halfway in between the marks. Cool. So, well, do we want to do we want to put some plugs in it and just see if it'll bust off, or try to check to see if it's getting fire? And it's probably an old points. I, I bet we're gonna have to clean them points. I see a condenser, so it's yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and they ain't bad. Let's go ahead and clean them points and put some spark plugs in it. Okay. I think if we dump a little gas down in it, it'll fire off. Crank it, I think so. It looks like somebody was at least maintaining the vehicle though. I mean, with the, as far as the ignition side of things, these points had to have been put in right before it was part. He ain't on, huh? Guess that would help. Might help a little bit. Oh. Huh. I'm going to see if this key turns it over. Now the whole, I guess the whole ignition switch is turning in there, so... I ain't doing nothing. It feels weird. Um, when I turn the key, I feel like the whole oh, tumbler, the tumbler. whole switch is just... I wonder if this set... Uh, that's weird. Let me try something. Because now there's a light on in here. I'm wondering if it don't have like a push button, you know what I mean? Start. And if you just don't turn the key all the way over. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. So hit it with that and I'll watch it. Just, just keep turning it over? Yeah. Yep. Get the spark. 
So, for some reason it's not, you know, turning over the starter, but we can figure that out later. You just right. have to turn that key all the way to the right. Cool. And it yeah. might be one that when you, I don't think so, but it, is it? I thought it might have been one of those where you press the pedal all the way down and it, and it oh, kicks yeah. it on, but this is not. It's got a solenoid actually right there on the starter that just runs off wires. And spray down all this linkage. I'm going to go ahead and take the base of that breather off there. Okay. It's actually pretty clean inside there, from what I can tell. I don't know what that is. No, it goes. That goes to something over here, don't it? Yep. But I'm afraid that's a stinking accelerator pump. Missing something though. Pin or something is what it looks like. We're gonna be able to tell how those wires ran to which cylinder. Yeah, yeah. yeah that little thing there held them right in place. I say I think the firing order's on that valve cover. If not, I know it's in that little book we got. Before I forget, I'm gonna put this here back on there. Let me clean it up just a little bit. Hard to believe it's this close to possibly running again. Yeah. Obviously there'll be a lot more kinks that'll need to be worked out, but this will at least let us know if the major problem has been fixed. That one don't want to stay on there. No, it's sloppy, sloppy. I think they had a piece of like tin foil or something stuffed up in there to help it stay on before. Right. Um, I think it'll stay on. I think it'll be enough to for it to run. Grab some gas and dump down in there. Yeah. Here we go. So it's it's off, you can tell, but it is at least trying to crank. Yeah. Huh? Pull it a little bit more my way. So. Uh, ooh, we may not be able to run it much with that <laughs> valve cover. Wow, definitely pumping oil. Ain't yeah. it? Uh, man, I really don't want to cover these fenders with oil. Let's try it one more time just to see okay. what it does. But I'm afraid it's going to sling oil everywhere. Hey, it did crank though. Yeah, it did crank. I'm 
I'm gonna try to fill this bowl up on this carburetor, just in case if it is it squirting. May have to pack a little bit of like, oh, it's squirting out there. Tin foil or something. Yeah, just something in there that'll let it grab more. Mm -hmm. It may be flooded now. It started coming out of the. Oh, it's just pouring out. Wow, it's yeah, it's gonna be flooded bad. We may have to walk away from it a little bit. It's just dumping that gas. I'll try to turn it over. Come on, This is the... Yeah, just, we're losing too much oil <laughs> yeah. to chance that. Oh, that's running. It's running, yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't take long to lose all that oil yeah. we just put in there. I guess we'll get that valve cover put back on there then. I think we're everything we need to be up here. It's just getting that distributor. Right, get it set. Right. I think we might have been right originally. It just needs to be tweaked a little bit. And figure out something on these plugs if we have to yeah. put some kind of... Something to hold them better. Yeah. Or if I can find new wires, that'd be our best bet. But let's see what we can do. Okay. something over there. No, I don't see anything over here. Unless it's that right back there, this corner. Yeah. There we go. Look right. Looks right. I think those were the bolts that were on the air breather. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's good to know it's pumping that oil like it is. Yeah. That, it was mainly coming off that chain, so mm -hmm. you know that chain's getting good and lubricated. At least there's only two bolts on this, rather the 50 that was on the oil pan. Right. You want me to grab those other wires? And yeah, because this one, this one is not going to stay on there. It's. I don't know. These should work. But these are for a Volkswagen, but they use that same design, you know, where they. Yeah. the end of the spark plug's gone. It's a little cap on it. So I don't see why they wouldn't work until we can order the right ones. Right. Oh, we, we, I mean, as long as they're long enough. Yeah. Two and four is what we need, so. Definitely gonna be long problem. enough. So we're robbing parts from another Volkswagen project we have around the shop uh, to put these spark plug wires on here. The way these are designed, most spark plugs have a little cap on the end of them that'll unscrew, and that's the same way a Volkswagen's designed. So these are really wore out; they won't stay on the on the spark plugs there. So we're just going to run these Volkswagen wires on there for now. We can order some wires; they'll be here tomorrow, so we can get that replaced. But we just really want to hear this thing actually run and hopefully idle under its own power. So get these switched out. I think we'll move the wires back the way they originally were and just tweak that distributor. I think we'll hear it purring like a kitten. Eyebrows still there? <laughs> yeah, they're just singed. Sounded pretty close yep. when it first cranked. I would, might want to get it back to that spot. Okay. Ooh, that's definitely not right.
Sounds pretty good. Sounds good, yeah, real good. Yeah, that's a choke. Dang it. Try it one more time. Jumped the gun on it. I was trying to just get it to idle down some. I'm pretty sure that's a choke. Still don't turn over great though. Lots of rust. <laughs> We're just out running of out of gas. Let me do it again just to make sure. But I think we're just it's running off what's in that bowl. And I think if we get some gas pumping up here to it, it'll sit there and idle long enough we can try some more stuff out. But we do need to get all of our radiator, radiator and stuff hooked back up. Don't want to run it hot. Feels like that timing's off though. Yep. Could be flooding it though. What it seems like. Kill switch works. <laughs> cool. I think we can start buckling up this coolant system. Like I said, we definitely don't want it to get hot. With right. <laughs> Too far into it now. Yeah. Step back. She's a runner though. Yep. Get that buckle back together where we get some water and antifreeze in it and then I guess try the clutch out, huh? See yeah. if it'll go in gear. So we went ahead and got the old radiator installed back on the car. Went ahead and replaced the fan belt on it got some fresh coolant in the system. We tried to go ahead and put some fresh gas into the gas tank just to see if it might pump up, but we had no luck at all on that. So cleaned out the old trash that was in the trunk and just put our temporary tank back there where we can pump fuel up as well. Now we knew we had a brake that was locked up when we first picked up the car, so we went ahead and addressed that because we knew we were not gonna move this car anywhere with a locked up brake. But now we wanna just see if this car is actually gonna move under its own power. Uh, so to just give you guys a little bit better idea of what we've got going on up underneath the hood, we got this roller coaster of a coolant line installed back on the car, but some of the old clamps are just not clamping and they're leaking. We had a couple around the shop we replaced those with, but we're gonna have to get a couple more. But for right now, it's just gonna drip a little bit. We got our air filter put back on there. Uh, everything seems to be in time. Now there was a lot of stuff we were able to jump over on this car. We basically cleaned the points, put some new spark plugs in it, new wires, and that's about it. On the old fuel pump here, it actually has a little manual pump on it, which is pretty cool to allow you to just pump that fuel up to the carburetor right here underneath the hood to make it get there a little bit quicker and easier. On our clutch system, we did notice it has a slave cylinder down there, which holds the fluid here that runs the, the clutch slave cylinder, as well as your brakes here. Now, we haven't tried to touch the brakes. I don't even want to have to mess with figuring out what this deal even does. It's just the weirdest contraption anyways. So, we're really hoping this clutch is going to work, but most of the time, any car set for 50 years with any kind of fluid like in the hydraulics, they're just gonna crystallize and not work. So we may have to address that. We did notice on our shifting linkage in here, this car is actually a four speed 
and the linkage was just terribly sloppy here. Uh, had some little bushings up front there that were rubber, just dry rotted, and the first time we tried shifting it around, they fell out, and so nothing was wanting to shift in gear. We got those replaced, and I think it's gonna shift in gear the way we want it to. Uh, other than that, I pretty much think we're good to go to try to give it its first test run. Got some old tires on here, but they are holding air. If this thing moves under its own power, we'll throw the hood back on it, try to make it to the car wash to give it its first wash in 50 years. Ready? Ready. Wow. <laughs> That's unchoked and everything. Oh, yeah. Sounds good, don't yeah. it? Quiet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who'd ever thought? <laughs> Let's see if it'll move, huh? Yeah. I'm gonna try first gear, which I believe is just straight up. The clutch pedal actually feels pretty good. I don't know how. I, guess I don't I, even want to try the brake pedal, yeah. but the clutch is working great. I guess that's what they call shoving it in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> we got we got reversing first, so you gonna try to make it over there? Yeah. Well, I guess we can get the hood put on it, huh? Yeah. Let's see if the lights and stuff work on it. Yeah. Everything working? Everything's working. What about blink? Well, tail lights are working. Blinker? Got that one. Not the side one up there, but that one's busted out back there. Got this one here. Huh. Wow. I don't know what all these others are. Oh, that's a choke. Cigarette lighter. Ugh, cigarettes. Don't lose it. Alright, let's get that hood put back on it and try Could to make it lights. over there.
I don't know if any of our gauges are working as far as our temperature and oil pressure. Doesn't look like it. Here we go. Ooh, you can tell them tires are flat. Bad flat spot. She's running pretty good. Get her in here before the rain wash off some of this 50 year old dust that I want to wash off. From what we can tell on this car, the body's actually in really good shape. I mean, there's absolutely no rust through on this car whatsoever. Now the question is, how well is this paint job going to actually clean up? You got me feeling like a monster Or something you can never conquer Or check yourself before you Come on, I'm looking my way I can already tell at this point that this car is looking a lot better, but a simple wash job is not going to be all it takes to bring this car to its full potential. So at this point we're just going to get it back to the shop and see what it actually takes to revive this 63 year old paint job. Now that the car has been washed and is dried off, uh, it really doesn't appear a whole lot different other than it's not covered in dust. As you can tell, this old paint is really oxidized up. It's just going to be an old single stage paint, so I'm not really sure how well it's actually going to shine up. But as you can tell here, we've just got a lot of imperfections. These are all like little bitty chips that are all in the paint along the fender there. Not really sure what caused those. Of course, we've got our bad spot in the hood here where the, the hinges need to be greased up and it kind of got bent up just a little bit. But just all along the car, there's just little imperfections here and there. Some chips right here. Uh, the roof's got a lot of those little chips and stuff in it. Doesn't look like there's any kind of hail damage or anything like that. Uh, we want to try to clean up these chrome bumpers with some steel wool the best we can. Have no idea what it's going to take if we can find anything to get that old house paint off of it there. Now on this side, I don't know what in the world happened. There's a bunch of little, man, just a bunch of little dings here that's chipped the paint off of it. So something went across this quarter panel pretty bad. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and try to use some rubbing compound, uh, either by hand or with the uh, buffing wheel. We'll kind of decide. Once again, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this car trying to make it shine up just because it's going to have its flaws, but we want something that's just going to make it be a good driver. I'm just going to go ahead and use step two of 3M of what we would normally use when we're buffing out just a base coat, clear coat system. This is not going to be as abrasive as a step one, so we're not going to have to worry about a lot of swirl marks. I'm just going to go ahead and use it on a hand pad here to see if we could maybe luck out and just rub this paint job out by hand rather than taking the buffing compound and just, it's a messy job, it's a lot of work, it's hard on your back and everything else. So if we can just apply this by hand and see what kind of difference it makes, that'll save us a lot of time. You can already tell it's starting to come back just a little bit. Just basically going to rub this in until it starts to haze over. Get a rag real quick. You can tell it's kind of just hazed over and looks about like the paint does everywhere else at this point. Take our fresh rag. Clean that off. And I think with just a little bit of time and going around the car, 
just polishing it out by hand will be everything we're looking for. As you guys know, there are some times that we cut some corners around the shop, but on this car, as clean as it is and the potential it holds, we just couldn't let ourselves walk away with only hand buffing it. We ended up replacing these old dry rotted tires with some fresh rubber to eliminate the old flat spots from where the car had just sat in the garage for over 50 years. I knew in the beginning that this car could clean up really nice, but I had no idea it would look this good. Well guys, here she is in all of her glory. I have to say this old paint job shined up pretty well. To me, this is one of our top finds we've ever had around the shop. You'd never know this car had been setting up in a garage for over 50 years. And now that she's running well and looking super sleek, there's only one last thing to do, and that's to drive her off into the sunset. When we first found this car, we were all super excited to know that we bought it for only 1650 bucks. We had no idea of what we were getting into this car regarding the condition or if it was even ever going to run again. Overall, we're super happy with the way this car turned out, and if any of you guys are interested in it, we plan on putting it on an online auction as well called eBay. So be sure to look down in the description for the link to that, and we hope to see this car go to another home that loves it as much as we do. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you guys on the next one.